addicted to our, what? To our smartphones? Many of us are on them all day long. <laughs> we are, all the time. Some people even sleep with them, eat with them. So what can we do to detox? Vince Garrisol went looking for answers. Phone in hand. Rhonda Scholar may remind you of yourself. I can't function without my phone, I'll be honest. The school administrator communicates with parents, students, and her own daughters. Her phone is essential. I was talking on my phone, and then I said, wait, where's my phone? I can't ignore a buzz or a little notification on my phone. Zach Gallagher, senior at Loyola, social media chair for two clubs, sounds familiar too. It's like a little trigger that you need to pick up the phone and check it. We asked Rhonda and Zach to measure their weekly phone use with the app Quality Time. It not only clocks their minute-by-minute -minute usage, but breaks that down app-by-app. App. In Rhonda's case, she was on her phone over 41 hours one week, more than 21 hours on Facebook, with seven and a half spent texting. It honestly does feel like a lot to me, and it made well, you're me... you're supposed to feel bad about it. I know, but I can't... Zach spent 21 hours on his phone, over six and a half on Facebook, and two hours on Snapchat. And now you look at your results, and what do you say? Yikes. We're <laughs> using the phone as a drug. It's a digital drug. Dr. David Greenfield, founder of the Center for Internet Addiction, estimates 5 to 10 percent of people are truly addicted. Another 80 percent overuse, misuse, or abuse their smartphones. Here's why. It's highly distracting and it changes your brain chemistry. Think of it this way. Every time you get an alert from your favorite app, like I just did, there's a good chance you feel better. And that increases the production of dopamine, the feel-good chemical in our brains. You are classically conditioned every time you get a ping that lets you know that there's a reward waiting. Together, these high-tech Chicago area bloggers tried a seven-day smartphone detox. It was hard at first. I mean, I will not lie that I would turn on my phone, scroll through, like, where's my Facebook icon? Their detox included removing social media apps like Facebook and Twitter from their phones, turning off the sounds of push notifications, and yes, even venturing out for dinner, leaving the phone at home. At first I had to fight not to check it, and then it got easier. Because I realized I wasn't doing something against my will. I wanted to do this. Rhonda has already made some of those changes. No phones at mealtime, for example. But it isn't easy. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> We're not going to say addiction, no. That's... Vince Girasoli, CBS 2 News. <laughs> Aren't we all a work in progress? Oh, I'm feeling Rhonda, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's a lot of time. When Dr. Greenfield says addiction doesn't equal the number of hours you spend on your phone. Instead, it's how using it negatively impacts your quality of life, including your relationships, your schoolwork, job performance, and finances.